Hello everyone, this is Leslie. I'm from the Buddhist Mahavihara uh, Facebook public page. We are broadcasting live this evening. And this evening we have a very special guest. And this is actually our first female guest that we had uh, in this last few days uh, in celebration of Visa. And uh, we have Dr. Iponika Dilani from Sri Lanka. She is an acad uh, academic from Sri Lanka. And I'd like to bring her on shortly, and uh, we will then get started with uh, this evening's uh, Dhamma sharing and discussion with Dr. Nip Nipu Nikaya. Yeah? Good evening, Doctor. Dr. Nip welcome. Mr. Leslie. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, everyone, this is Dr. Nipu Nika Dilani. Uh, let me read her profile, and then uh, we'll understand better about uh, our doctor here. Uh, Dr. Nipunika obtained a Bachelor of Arts in 2006 from the University of Peradeniya, majoring in English, Psychology and Sociology. She then obtained a Master's in, in, uh, in Arts uh, in Linguistics in 2010 from the University of Kalania. Dr. Nipunika obtained a PhD uh, in 2014 from the Buddhist and Pali University Sri Lanka by submitting her thesis and title a comparative study of the treatment of sexual jealousy in Buddhist Jataka stories and in William Shakespeare's Othello. Now, this is a very interesting uh, thesis. I haven't come across anybody do uh, cross between Jataka stories and uh, William Shakespeare's Othello. Uh, she's currently a senior lecturer at the Department of English at the Buddhist and Pali University of Sri Lanka. Uh, she has attended numerous courses and had presented research papers mm -hmm at many conferences, and she's also a mark, uh, marking examiner uh, at the Department of Examinations. She aspires to reach the top of academia in literature and linguistics, and she intends to assist and inspire her students uh, to be their best in their respective fields. So there we have uh, Dr. Nipunika and her profile. Uh, now we have a little understanding of who she is. And the first time, that we have brought her onto the show, and as this is the first time we have brought her onto uh, the Dhammadana series at Buddhist Mahavihara. So, welcome, Doctor. Oop. Have you lost her for a second? Okay, you're back. We lost you for a second. Yeah. You go on. Yeah. So now I Thank will you. hand the <laughs> I'll hand the, the stage to you, and you will take over for the next uh, forty minutes or so, Doctor. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Leslie. I feel privileged to do today's talk for Mahavi on behalf of Mahavihara. And first of all, I would like to thank for inviting me to uh, deliver a talk on uh, how women can modify their family, their character, their roles, uh, and how women, how, what ethics women can develop for the development of, development of family life. Uh, Namo Buddhaya, uh, Venerable Sirs, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, good evening to all of you. Today I'm going to talk about how we, uh, as how we women can modify our roles as mothers, as sisters, uh, especially as wives, because that is uh, uh, the relationship between, relationship between husband and wife has like many complications in the modern society. society. So I will pay more attention to uh, more more attention to the role of wife, how a wife can modify her role according to Buddhism. When we think about Buddhist discourse, Buddhist discourse provides ample examples, ample assistance for women to develop their uh, different roles according to Buddhism for the development of worldly and spiritual lives. Uh, Buddhist Jataka stories, which are related to the past lives of the Lord Buddha, provides ample assistance, ample examples for us to uh, develop our morals, uh, for us to develop our values, and teaches us many ethics for our family life. 
among many such Chathaka stories, today I have selected one uh, very good Chathaka story that is Sambula Chathaka because I felt that this Sambula Chathaka is more applicable to the modern society. And not only that, I feel that uh, 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 it is the women, we as women are blessed to learn about a character that the Lord Buddha has appreciated very much. In some, uh, lo the Lord Buddha expounded Sambula Chataka in uh, once the uh, the bhikkhus appreciated the character of Queen Mallika. Then Lord Buddha expounded this Sambula Chataka in order to appreciate Queen Mallika's character not only in the current birth and the Buddha wanted to show that Queen Mallika had been a very devout devoted woman, devoted wife in, even in past lives also. So in the Sambula Jataka, uh, Queen Sambula is identified as Queen Mallika in the present life. So first I will briefly tell the story of Sambula Jataka. So in the story, Queen Mallika is the queen consort to the king uh, Sottisena. Queen, Sotis, she, Queen Mallika is a person who, is, who has an excessive beauty. Not only that, she has very good qualities for, for women to follow. Because she, uh, she is an inspiring role model, uh, having, having uh, faithfulness, uh, excessive endurance, and kind of true devotion to the husband. Uh, in the story, in Sambula Jataka, King Sottisena got struck with leprosy and the doctors found his illness incurable and he was banished to the forest. Then Queen Sambula had many chances to abandon the king like all the other people did. But she never did so. She as a true devoted, as a true devoted wife, she followed him in the forest. She attended to uh, all her, she attended to all her needs, all his needs, uh, all like she, actually Queen Sambula cleaned him, fed him, treated he, he, treated King Sottisena in the, in his illness and attended to all his needs in the forest. One day, Queen Sambula had to go, uh, go to the middle of the forest in search of food. They are like, actually like uh, he goes, she goes everywhere in the forest alone. So she was got caught by a goblin who was attracted to her magnificence. So then like the Queen Sambula pleaded with the goblin asking her to let go, asking him to uh, leave her alone saying that uh, she like uh, without her presence Kin, kin Sottisena would be desperately helpless. In this moment, she never thought about herself. She, she thought about the plight of the Kin Sottisena. Then actually like uh, whatever the uh, queen tried to explain, Goblin, Goblin did not allow her to go. So she was desperately helpless. Then uh, the god Sakra saw her uh, helpless situation and came to, he came to her help, seeing her true faithfulness and true selflessness. Because she never thought about her life. She thought about uh, only about her husband's life. Then after some attempts, like uh, she was able to escape from the goblin with the help of God Sakra. And uh, uh, she came back uh, when, she, when she returned. 
it was placed late in the evening so uh, you know, accused her of adultery so you can imagine her helpless situation she had no other option like she has no no way to prove her innocence and faithfulness so she thought to perform an act of uh, a truth in order to prove her faithfulness so queen sambula uh, performed an act of act of truth um, act of truth illness to be cured uh, on her faithfulness so actually once she completed her uh, act of truth uh, his illness his uh, illness disappeared completely and he was cured on her faithfulness so we can see the power of being faithful being devoted to the husband so uh, then once she once he was completely uh, cured completely healed they returned to the country and king uh, king so uh, and sottisena uh, became the king of benares and uh, queen sambula was conferred uh, the rank, conferred to the rank of consort again and likewise they lived for some time actually when you when they lived for some time king sottisena began to change his behavior to the queen so he uh, like he he forgot the very existence of the queen and he sought the pleasure with other women so uh, queen sambula became very much upset for this and she uh, like she that she became thin and thin because of her psychological condition and not only that she dis that actually disappeared her beauty so seeing her this difference uh, uh, the uh, king sottisena's father that is king queen uh sambulas uh, father in law asked for the reasons then queen sambula explained that explained how she has been neglected how she has been ill treated by king sottisena then like uh, uh, this father in law understood the situ understood her plight and he, uh, like uh, called his own son and reminded him how she, how he was looked after how he was treated and how he gained the kinship again on her faithfulness she he his uh, king sottisena's father reminded him only because of king queen sambula he was able to be the king again in benares so uh, finally king sottisena understood his fault his mistake and asked for forgiveness for queen sambula and he promised to he, he and his women promised to obey uh, queen sambula's commands hereafter in this way the couple uh, lived very happily after uh, after that so this simple story teaches us many ethics to our family life let's see how women how we as women uh, do, like the lord buddha in saptabarya sutra uh, explains kind of like uh, introduces seven uh, uh, seven types of virus uh, i will briefly ex uh, ex explain this sutra that uh, that this saptabarya sutra appears in anguttara nikaya and one day uh, the lord buddha one day the lord buddha went to another pindika's uh, house for an arms and then he heard 
uh, an aggressive noise from inside the house who who was that and the anath pindika told that is his uh, new uh, daughter in law who is uh, Sujata uh, and she the Anatha Pintik explained that he she is an immoral woman. Then the Lord Buddha called her in and asked whether she knew the seven types of wives. When she told that she doesn't know about those seven types of wives, the Lord Buddha explained the characteristics of those seven types of wives. Uh, the first type of wife is Vadakabharya, the that is the wife who always disturbs the husband grumbling for something all the time and she can she sometimes have like she has she sometimes has illegal relationships also the second type of wife is chorabharya that is uh, that is the wife who is similar to a robber she like she destroys is the husband's earnings and she like uh, uh, she like uh, she she doesn't do any uh, like she doesn't support the husband in house domestic works. So the other type of wife is Swami Barya, who like who is uh, the wife who she is the wife who dominates the husband with violence and insulting words and. She 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 has a relationship between type of a relationship uh, of a master like who dominates the uh, husband then the other type of wife is matubarya that is the wife who has a, who who has a, who has qualities of a mother she shows the, she shows motherly love and care to the husband, looks after him as a mother does. So the other next type is Bhagini Bharya, that is the uh, wife uh, similar to a sister. She like uh, that wife shows a relationship between a uh, younger sister and elder, elder brother to the husband. Then the other type is Saki Barya, that is the wife who who creates a relationship of a relationship of a friendship with the husband. The last type of wife is the Dasi Barya, that is the wife who does all the domestic choirs and she does everything. She attends uh, attends to all the needs of the husband as a servant does so now you can think about which type of a wife are you you are right so and then uh, when we think about the modern society we can see many families have broken up broken down because of the the first three wives that i mentioned the first three First three wives are Badaka, Chora, and Swami Baryal. Because of those uh, those types of wives, many families have broken down in the modern society. Actually, not only in the modern society, due, even during the Buddha's time, there were such types of wives. I will take one example of a Badaka part, Badaka Barya, from Buddha's life and Buddha's time. That is, there were was one woman called Revati who was the wife to wife of uh, Nandiya Upasaka. Revati was an immoral wife. Uh, she cheated the husband but, but uh, in contrast to her uh, Nandiya was a very virtuous, uh, virtuous Upasaka who followed the Buddha's order perfectly. One day like uh, one day uh, Nandiya Upasaka had to go on an event to some other town and at this uh, moment she he asked uh, her uh, he asked his wife Revati to perform continue all the merry 
victorious activities that she, that he has been doing but uh, she promised to do so but she never did so and she saved that money gave uh, she did not uh, say, she cheated the husband saying that she would promise to she uh, she would do all the meritorious activities so at the end of her life two uh, two uh, people from the hill came there to take her to the hill and they wanted to show the heaven and take her to hell so then when they were taking her to heaven she saw a magnificent palace mansion a heavenly mansion and asked whose it was then uh, they explained that it was built it was designed for Upasaka Nandir, who, are, who is still living in the human realm. So uh, we can see like when he was living, his, uh, his place in the heaven was already built. Then she said like I am his wife, so I would like to share his palace here in the heaven. But the, uh, but the he men in the hell told that you deserve no heaven for the treatment for for the uh, for the characteristics you want uh, of a vadaka barya you deserves only the hell and through threw her into the hell you can see this uh, if you do, if anybody who has these three types of wife uh, characteristics of a wife uh, has a very bad birth uh, in the next life so but when we think about uh, just i will take one example for the other four types of wives when we think about queen yashodara so throughout the sansara she has been the wife to bodhisattva it is said that uh, in her uh, in her birth she has never been uh, been one of the three wives like vadaka barya chora barya or sami barya but throughout the sansara she has been either a matu barya uh, sakini barya baki uh, bagini barya so like uh, if i take another example when you think about uh, vishaka she has been a matu barya uh, so she like uh, i will come to my jataka uh, tale so when we think about queen sampula so you can see Queen Sambula owns the characteristics of a Madhu Bhadya. She looked after the husband. She never, she had much patience and she never got angry with the husband. So like she, all these good women gains uh, uh, at the end of their lives, sometimes some of them have gained uh, 10 Nibbana or they get a very good, they are born in the heaven in their next lives for just for being a good wife uh, to the husband. So we must try to be such, develop such characteristics in us also. Uh, so like, uh, actually like, uh, we can like if we develop such a good uh, such characteristics of a matu barya bagini barya sakhi barya or dasi barya we can set a good example to our children and we can uh, we can develop our worldly life as well as our spiritual life so when we think about the modern society so i know that women play women are not restricted restricted to the role of wife they play different roles in the society so i feel the ease like uh, developing the character this is my personal of opinion so developing the character characteristics of uh, uh, sakhi barya is easy for the mod modern women so now i am moving to another point so the chart uh, so this uh, story shows how women can accumulate much merit 
during this time during this time uh, during this hard time in the world so once the lord put the set to the bhikkhus in vinaya pitaka like attending to patients is uh, quite similar to a uh, praying homage, paying homage to the Lord Buddha. The Lord Buddha stressed the importance of the same fact in Anguttara Nikaya also, applying it to lay disciples. So lay disciples also can accumulate much merit due, like by attending to invalids patience so maybe today in the society uh, today in your house uh, you are sometimes your husband maybe your loved ones maybe any of them uh, as king sampula did to king sottisena and you can accumulate much merit and you can accumulate good health in this life and uh, and uh, uh, good birth in the next life if you attend to the, if you attend to the invalids so the lord put the gives uh, provide sets uh, very good examples for us by uh, he himself attended to he uh, attended to the invalids patients by uh, uh, by going there and meeting them he never waited till people came uh, came in uh, came for uh, his help so we also can do that so do this so for example sometimes we women uh, maybe like uh, uh, we, we women uh, play different roles in the society and we are uh, we maintain high standards but don't regardless of regardless of the standard don't, don't think about your status in the society go uh, go near the people in valley it's and help them that will give you many benefits to your worldly life as well as to your next any of your loved ones is uh, seriously ill is seriously ill and fallen into deathbed how would you like uh, face such a serious situation as a woman the lord uh, that the buddhism provides us good examples for this also so uh, the lord Buddha appreciates the character of nakula mata so she like uh, uh, she once she once her husband nakula pitu was seriously ill and fallen into death uh, death bed uh, she uh, she like she did not make make him worried so just imagine if we face this situation we will cry over we will cry we will lament and we will weep we will cry talking about the past life how we spent the life with our loved ones and we will tell him that we can't live without uh, him we can't face the future without him we will talk all those nonsense to the person who is dying but remember those nonsense does does not do any good for the person who is dying so nakula what the nakula mata did is she reminded nakula pitu the meritorious activities that he had performed in the past and she told him like uh, she told him she can uh, face the future she can uh, face any challenge in the future without him so she consoled him uh, he consoled him saying that he has laid the foundation uh, to for her to face the future any hardship without her so then actually this is the lord Buddha has said the uh, dying person should have a peaceful mind so if you are worried that if you are attached to the worldly life your next life will be not 
your next life won't be successful. So once the Nakula Pitu was uh, uh, recovered a little, he went to the Lord and told this incident told how Nakula Mata reacted to his illness. Then the Buddha appreciated Nakula Mata, say life like Nakula Mata, because she is your counsel. Uh, sorry for the disturbance and I would continue my talk. So I was talking about the supreme qualities, supreme virtues a woman could uh, inculcate in her. The Lord Buddha introduces them uh, such qualities a woman can, a mother can uh, uh, inculcate, develop in Mittan Sansa Sutra. Those supreme virtues are Mitta, Karuna, Mudita and Upeka. So if a woman uh, develop these qualities, definitely she would have a good birth in the next life. Not only that, she would be able to succeed, uh, would be able to uh, lead a successful life in the current. You can see she had all these qualities. She never got angry. She had compassion, love. She never grudged any animosity, hostility towards the husband. So she had all these qualities and she, was, she got good repercussion for her her behavior. She was appreciated by in the current life as Queen Sambula. Not only that, she was like she was able to be born as Queen Mallika that, who was very much appreciated by the Lord Buddha. That is the only gain a woman can achieve in her life. So we, we also must try to develop these good qualities as ethics for the development of family life. So then, uh, uh, so when we think about some uh, the Buddha's time, there have been mothers sometimes who misused uh, motherhood. So for example, if I take one example, that is uh, Uttaramata Petavatru. Petavatru, it's in Petavatru. So a story that uh, Uttara, that Uttara, that is the, uh, she, uh, she, uh, she influenced her, her son when he was doing a lot of meritorious activities. Her son was a good, uh, a good disciple disciple of the Buddha but she didn't like him to perform uh, meritorious activities so she was born as a praetor in her next life. There are many instances in Buddhist canon so we have to play the role of mother very carefully without misusing it but developing good qualities good ethics for the development of family. So in uh, when we think about like uh, 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 this Jataka story shows us uh, how we can uh, develop a good, how we can behave towards our in-laws also. That is also much complicated role played by women in the modern society. So you can see like Queen Sambula had a very good trap, a very good relationship with her father-in-law. So that's why she, father-in-law was able to talk about the person personal things. So he was the one who saved her at the end. So if we have a good relationship with our, with our uh, in-laws, so that is also very much important to our family life. So when we think about Mangala Sutra in Kuddhakanikai, actually Mangala Sutra is full of ethics for us to develop, for us to inculcate, for the development, development of our family life as well as the next birth. So, so I will uh, move on to another example. So how we can develop our life, family ethics. 
So in another uh, sutra, it's called Nakula Pita Sutra. The Nakula Pita once uh, went to meet the Lord Buddha and said that she he would like to have Nakula Mata as her wife in the next life. somebody wishes to see the wife in this birth and the next life also the couple the husband and should uh, husband and wife should develop some qualities they he said that those qualities are the husband and wife should have equal faith equal seal equal tag that is generosity and equal partner that is uh, the knowledge of uh, Dhamma, if you develop these uh, characteristics, these qualities to a similar level, both husband and wife, you can have the same husband in the next life. And you will never have a bad birth in the next life. So now I am coming to the conclusion, the end of my talk. In conclusion now, so this is a bad time for the whole world. So, but we can change, we can convert this bad time for the benefit of the family life. We can use this bad time to develop family ethics, family ethics. Uh, so, because i said this because all the members of the family spend together this is the time we will all live together as a family so uh, we have got a good chance actually even though this is the bad time for the world but this is the good time for the family from today during this Vesak season we must determine as women as sisters as as uh, mothers and as wives, we must determine uh, to the development of our current life and the uh, current life and the next life. So uh, that is the end of my speech, my talk. Thank you very much for hearing and may the triple gem bless you.